Well, hello and welcome back to Bible Bites. Today we're actually going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit that is most essential to have during this time of the holidays with all of the presents and especially the food. And uh, that fruit is not a fruit you want to eat, it's actually the fruit of self-control. So we're talking about the final fruit of the Spirit self-control. I hope you guys are excited as we wrap up this series on the fruit of the Spirit. Let's get to it. All right, so like I said in that intro, today is all about self-control. And I've mentioned this in quite a few of these Bible Bites on the fruit of the Spirit, but a lot of the fruit of the Spirit are related to other fruit in the list that we get there in Galatians. You know, you have kindness that is a whole lot, you know, similar to love. And so self-control, I think, is similar to all of the fruit of the Spirit, or it's related to all the fruit of the Spirit in a sense that it's really the, the culmination of all of these. We need to have self-control and, and really diligence in our lives to be able to live out all of these fruit of the Spirit on a daily basis. So we talk about this a lot in Bible Bites, but this idea of, uh, you know, getting in God's Word daily, having a healthy prayer life, and, and really uh, along with that is being able to live out the Great Commission, doing evangelism and discipleship. All of these things require discipline. They require self-control. And so I think that this is the best fruit of the Spirit, really, to wrap this all up. Uh, it makes sense because that's the way that they're lined up in Scripture. But I'm excited for this fruit of the Spirit specifically because it has a lot uh, that I need to learn from it, from this idea of self-control and how that pertains to my life and what Scripture has to say about that. So the passage that we're going to be looking at today is in Titus 2, 11 through 13. And I'm going to read that for us now. It says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a passage that I memorized as a young kid uh, in Awanas. A lot of you watching these Bible Bites might know what Awanas is or heard about it, but it's this idea of memorizing scripture. It's like Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, uh, but instead of learning how to make fire, you get to do fun games and crafts and also memorize scripture. And it's actually a, a practice that takes quite a lot of self-control. And as a young kid, even though I was raised in the church, I wasn't really following Jesus, so the self-control that I had to be able to memorize scripture came from a completely self-motivated place. But the self-control that we're seeing here in Titus is talking about self-control that is powered by the Holy Spirit. And that's something that really all of these fruit of the Spirit, that's why they're called the fruit of the Spirit, is it's the fruit that's going to be coming of your life when the Holy Spirit is working in and through you. And so this passage here really kind of uh, gives us a good picture on how we're supposed to live, but it also gives us a, a picture of, of what's, the, what's the ultimate, ultimate outcome of that. So I had to be self-controlled as a kid to, to, to stay on target and to be able to learn and, and, and memorize scripture, but things that I need to be self-controlled in as an adult now that I'm walking in the spirit are things like keeping Christ on the throne. You know, always constantly asking this question of who's calling the shots right now. Is it Jesus calling these shots or is it Benny calling these shots? I need to have self-control to, you know, be committed to setting aside time every single day to get in scripture. I need to be self-controlled to recognize that I can't get through this life very well on my own. I need to have a healthy prayer life so that God can be leading me and guiding me. I need to have self-control in, in time management and saying I need to make time for the most important things. Whether that's family, whether that's you know making time to do evangelism or discipleship, God calls us to have self-control control. God even calls us to have self-control on, on, on uh, 
more natural things as well, you know, portion control when I'm eating, self-control and, and self-discipline to, you know, keep my body in, in, in good physical shape so I can live this life as best as possible and give God my my all each and every day. Some things like that are, are for, for a lot of people, even harder than the spiritual aspects of self-control. But we see in this passage that we are called uh, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. And God's grace teaches us uh, to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Now, what's the importance of that? Well, a big part of that is, is, you know, we talked about this, you know, they'll know we are Christians by our love, is, you know, when we're living a life that's self-controlled, upright, and godly, it frees us up to have that much more time and energy and ability to be able to be a light to those around us. We're called to be salt and light in the world. But then it says, waiting for our blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that right there, that is the end goal of all of these fruit of the Spirit. That's why I chose this passage because it has a very, uh, very strong emphasis on the point of all of these fruit is so that we can be, you know, living this godly life, this, this self-controlled, upright, godly life. And it's that we're living this life waiting for the appearing of our great God and Savior. And that is the outcome of this life. And that's really the reason that we're called to live with these fruit of the Spirit. And so that while we're here on this earth, while we're waiting, we need to have love. We need to have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so I have had an amazing time going through these, these fruit of the Spirit and learning more about each of them from different passages in Scripture. And really self-control is what it took for me to be able to, you know, sit down and, and really do the study required to get into Scripture for each one of these. But the fruit of the Spirit is something that I don't want to just stop in my life after I'm done with this series. And so my challenge for myself is, you know, I've been taking one week to focus on one fruit of the Spirit, and it's been good. It's been something that's been encouraging and, and helping refocus myself on what Jesus has for me on a daily basis. But really, this idea of all of this is for, you know, we're, we're waiting for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the end goal of all of this, is we need these fruit of the Spirit so that we could be living right now with our limited time on earth in such a way that we are making the greatest impact for all eternity. Because when Jesus comes back, we're, we're losing our ability to influence people here and now in the present, here on earth, for eternity, for salvation through evangelism and discipleship. So I hope, I hope that this has been an encouraging series for you. It has been for myself, like I said, just learning about all these different fruit, but also being able to just refocus on the great commission that Jesus has called us to and knowing that that's what the whole goal of that fruit is to make the most of the here and now. So if this is encouraging to you, like this video, share it with some friends, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next Bible Bite.